So we're in downtown Toronto today and I'm with my friend Lee Earle. Uh, Lee's a wild forager, she's a wildlife tracker and ecologist and she spent a ton of time exploring the parks around here and has found some real gems over here over the years and what I'd love to share and show in this video is how as we start to expand our natural awareness and start to learn how to track, suddenly these parks are just full of life that you would miss otherwise. So I'm going to hand it over to Lee right now to show us some mysteries that she's come across while out exploring in the parks here. Take it away Lee. Cool. Well, thanks. I um, wanted to show one of these things off because it was a great, exciting mystery when I first started noticing. Uh, every time that I get the opportunity to investigate a hole in a dead standing or partially living tree, I'm like right in there. I'm like, what's going on in there? Because there's all kinds of evidence of different animal behavior. And this one is a perfect example as you can see here, I've been able to pull out some scat, actually, of one of my favorite, absolute favorite, of small rodents. I'm a huge fan of them. And they actually do this behavior where they have um, midden, so like they actually poop Hold over on, and midden? over again. Hold on, What's a midden? Yeah, so it's like evidence, uh, like a waste site of an animal. So where either they've been feeding and all the food waste is, or where they've been pooping over and over again, repeatedly, a latrine. Um, and flying squirrels are actually really well known. Flying know. squirrels. Yeah, flying squirrels. The best squirrel, yeah. perhaps the most famous squirrel of all, <laughs> but the most secretive because they're nocturnal. And Did they're you even know there was flying squirrels in Toronto? Flying squirrels in Toronto. And it's Pretty rad. like this type of evidence. Scat, we like to say, not just poop. Um, animal scat uh, is a really big part of an animal's life. They eat and they poop. So if you can't find what they're eating, you can often find the remains of what they've uh, left behind. And this is just super motivating, especially uh, when you can just take something that might be just a gnarl on a tree and then investigate how how many flying squirrels could be living in this and when so was the, when were they overwintering? And Why flying squirrel and not a gray squirrel, a chipmunk, a red squirrel? What, what's telling you that this is flying squirrel that we're pulling out well, of here? Well, what a great question. First of all, it's really important to know that some scat is not for handling. It's super hazardous. Oh. You can get very, very sick. Um, but I'm familiar with what I can and can't handle. And so with this, we like to get a little uh, hands-on. And it has a really specific shape where it's sort of a long Rice crispy flattened on both sides. And when you roll it, it doesn't roll evenly throughout oh. your hand. It kind of has a bit of a shake to it. And this is evidence for the shape of it belonging to a flying squirrel. Now the Specific real question Specific to a gray is, squirrel, red squirrel that would actually roll because it's more cylindrical all the way around. More rounded, yep. more rounded. And so you'll notice that it has a different feel and often a different size. Depending on the individual, they can have uh, scats of different sizes. But once you start investigating, you'll come with your own questions too yeah. of like, how many animals and how fresh is this? And what were they eating to cause this different color? So a question I'd have is, could a gray squirrel or a red squirrel leave a midden like that? Or is that specific to flying squirrels? What a great question. It's actually a behavior that is unique to flying squirrels that they will latrine in one site over and over again. Um, but that being said, northern or southern flying squirrel, who Which knows? One? Sweet. So that's just a really neat example here, like a little hole on the side of a tree on the side of the trail. How many hundreds of people walk up this trail and would have no idea that flying squirrels are even in this park? Mm. Uh, but because we're, as a tracker, you start to ask these kinds of questions, you start to investigate and get curious, suddenly you find that there's a flying squirrel that's using this as the midden, uh, which takes you one step closer to actually knowing when the flying squirrel's hanging out here and maybe being able to see it, uh, maybe being able to take a, uh, a photo of it, and maybe being able to actually get to know it a little bit and form a bit of a relationship with it and its life cycle. So that's a great one, Lee. Um, so one thing that's really exciting and that happens to me all the time, I feel really grateful, but it happens to everyone I know who tracks is all of a sudden I'm out, I'm scouting something. I'm familiar with the spark, like Chris said. And so I had an idea that there was a flying squirrel at the train site I wanted to show, um, but I couldn't remember what tree. So I was here a few minutes earlier than we're filming this and I was looking around and being sneaky and looking and I found this and confirmed this latrine site. And then I went to get my things and, go, and walk to the trail. And then in the middle of the trail, right as some people were walking their dogs some people were biking by there's a white-tailed deer mm. and i was still it didn't startle and i got to see it browsing so there's like minutes old fresh browse that i want to show Ooh. you guys next and browses 